بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين صدق الله العلي العظيم How do we attract other people to our faith? Do we really need to invite people to Islam? This is a subject of a long debate between Muslim scholars. And this is an ongoing debate. Whether we have been endowed with this responsibility of inviting others or not. Does God want me to invite others to Islam? Some people say no. Some people say I am very happy, I am proud that I am a Muslim. And we have enough number of Muslims worldwide. So we don't need to add any more numbers. We don't need more subscriptions to our club. We have enough members. Others say, no, this is a religion, a missionary religion. And this book, the Holy Quran, is replete with invitations, with examples of how to invite, how to perform da'wah and tabligh, to invite others. In the same fashion, when you find someone who's hungry, starving, he doesn't have food, you must share your food with him. With the same standards you have to, when you find someone who's starving, spiritually starving, morally starving, he's not going in the right way, he's not moving in the right direction, then you have to share your spiritual and moral food with that person. God says in chapter 5 that when you bring life, when you breathe life into the soul of a single person as if you have a breathed life in the, in the souls of all mankind. You resurrected all mankind. Ahyaha here means when you hold the hand of someone and rescue him or her from deviation, from corruption, from moving in the wrong direction. This is Ihya. Ihya is guidance. This is the real meaning of Ihya. When you guide someone, when you save someone, So da'wah and invitation is definitely is part and parcel of our faith. And there are many ways, of course, of inviting others. But I have chosen three, three items, three tools, based on the priorities, based on importance. Three tools where we can invite people to our faith, to our religion. Number one tool, and this is the most important, 
Nothing is more important than this first tool. It is akhlaq and manners. Through your manners, you can bring people into your faith. If you take manners out of anything, that thing is going to expire. That, thing's, that thing is going to collapse. Sometimes, my friends, you deal with some people. They are not your people. They are not your blood. They are not your culture. They are not your religion. They have different religion, different language, different land, different food. Everything is different. But because of their manners, good manners, because of their honest qualities, you feel th those people are close to you. You feel those people are your people, though you don't speak their language. You don't share religion with them. You don't go to their church. But because of their good manners, you feel that those people are close to me. I don't speak their language, but they are my family. I feel they are my family. And sometimes because of the missing of these good manners, you cannot tolerate your own people. You cannot tolerate people in your community, in your country, in your city, in your neighborhood. You turn away from them. So it is akhlaq, my friends. I admire a taxi driver that turns his meter on and when the journey is over, he gives you back the rest of the change. Even if the rest of the change is 50 cents, he will give it back to you. I salute that person. I admire that person. I respect that person because he's an honest person. Maybe he's struggling to make ends meet. Maybe he has a family. Maybe this 50 cents or $1 makes a big difference for him, not for you. But because he's an honest person. His income is halal. He will enjoy his life. And I would not respect an attorney general who stands in a press conference and he speaks lies to defend his president. He's a minister of justice. And justice is something important. When the minister of justice is being dishonest, he does not rule with justice, I would not respect him. I would not admire him. God says in the Quran, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanat ila ahli. Wa idha hakamtum bayna al-nasi an tahkumu bil-adl. When you rule, when you mediate among people, when you judge among people, you have to bring justice. You have to be just. And tahkumu bil-adl. No favoritism here. Not because this is of my party, this is of my family, this is white, because of my color. I don't look at these things. I look at justice. When a person is just, when a person exercises justice in his life, in his private life, in his public life, he earns the admiration, the respect of people around him. Another thing I saw the other day, It was a game, I saw it in the news, a soccer game between two teams. So the referee in that game, he gave penalty to one of, one of the teams. But that, they did not deserve that penalty. Imagine the team leader came to the referee and he said to him, no, we don't deserve this penalty. They didn't do anything wrong. The referee said, no, I'm the king here. You have to follow my instructions. So one of the players of this team, which the referee gave him, gave them and offered them a penalty, he stood before the goalkeeper and he shot the ball not towards the goal, in the other direction. He said, because I don't accept this. This is winning. This is a winner team. Those teams have values because the sport it's supposed to teach us how to stick to our principles and our values. Not to cheat, not to lie, not to be dishonest. So even if the referee, referee is mistaken, I should not be mistaken because I know I don't deserve this. This is justice. 
This is you start liking those people. Sometimes you get attached to someone who does not pray, but because of his, the quality of honesty. And sometimes you run away from someone who prays because he is not, he's not honest, he's dishonest. Akhlaq, my friends. Akhlaq, manners. Manners is the first tool for invitation, for attraction, to bring people to you, to your faith, to your culture, to your family. Akhlaq, manners. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the imams of Ahlul Bayt attracted many, many people to Islam not through his preachings but through his values, his honesty, his manners. When Amir al-Mu'mineen sees someone while he's the governor, he's Amir al-Mu'mineen, he's the commander. Someone who's a Christian walking in the desert, and Amir al-Mu'mineen has no bodyguard. <coughs> this is why he was assassinated in the mosque, because he was alone. He had no bodyguard. He went to the mosque alone. This is why he was assassinated. He would walk without bodyguards. He would refuse. Some of his companions volunteer. They voluntarily come and say, we want to protect you. He says, no, I don't want anyone to walk behind me. This is not good. It's not good for your honor to walk behind me. So when he sees a Christian man and he does not, out of humility, Amir al-Mu'mineen does not mention his name, neither his title. The man doesn't know that this is, this is the, the leader of this, this important empire, not just a city, not just a county, the whole Islamic empire. But then he realizes after that, when Amir al-Mu'mineen said to him, I have to usher you into your direction, you're going to Basra, I will walk. The man said to him, but I thought you are from Kufa and the direction to Kufa is this way. Ali says, yes, I know. Allamana Rasulullah. We have a teacher, a mentor, that when you become a friend with someone, walk with him at the time of departure, usher your guest. Don't leave him alone. He's coming to your house, to your place, to your mosque. When the person is leaving, usher him to the door. Go with him for 40 steps. Walk with him into his direction. And then say bye to him and then go to your own direction. The man said, wow, this is great. This is your prophet Muhammad? He said, yes, this is what our prophet taught us to do. The man said to him, then what is your name? Let me know your name. Ali ibn Abi Talib, very simply, he says, Ana Ali ibn Abi Talib. The man could not believe, he could not believe that he's standing before the caliph of this empire. And this caliph is walking with him despite him being a Christian. The man was not a Muslim. At that moment, the man says, Ana ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. My friends, our days are numbered in this life, believe me. Our days, I would not say our weeks or months or years, our days are numbered. We have been made. You have been constructed of a number of days. These days are going to expire. These days now, now that I talk to you, my days are being dismantled. I'm using these days. My mileage is almost over. I'm not here forever. But we have to leave a legacy. And that legacy is the legacy of akhlaq how to attract people to our religion through akhlaq, through manners, through our relationships. Let them find, discover the humanity inside us. Before they call us Muslims, let them say he's a human. I'm dealing with a human. I don't fear this person. I'm safe with this person. If I do business with this person, I'm safe. If I talk to this person, I'm safe. If I sit next to him, if he's my neighbor, I'm safe. I feel safe because I'm with such a person. 
That is the first tool of invitation. And the second and the third, I promise you, inshallah, for next week. This coming Saturday, tomorrow, is the night, the eve of mid Shaban. Laylatun Nisbi min Shaban. Shabani Maya Shaban. Tomorrow, inshallah, Saturday night. And we have a celebration. It begins here immediately after Salat al Maghrib. Salat al Maghrib is going to be at 7.38, inshallah, sharp, Saturday, tomorrow. And after that, we begin the Salat, inshallah, immediately. And the celebration begins. So I invite you to attend with your families, with your friends, to celebrate the anniversary of the birthday of the 12th Imam, Al Imam Al Hujjat ibn Al Hassan Al Mahdi Al Muntadar Ajallah wa Ta'ala Farajah wa Sahala Makhraj. And we're going to ask you to raise some funds for this institution. This institution depends on God, but God said, My money are in your pockets. And this is exactly a verse in the Quran. God says, sustain your families from my money, but I left my money in your pockets. So try to help this institution. This institution depends on God and the mu'mineen, the pure spirited like you. So when you come here, try to speak to Haj Samir Amiri. If you are not able to come, Haj Samir is standing here, inshallah, and give him your donations so we can keep the door open and we can keep these activities, inshallah. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات إنك على كل شيء قدير وعجل اللهم في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا واجعلنا اللهم من أنصاره وأعوانه وإلى أرواح الشهداء والمؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد